Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a simple text logo in Inkscape. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can also support my channel and help me grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get awesome GIMP and Inkscape extras in return. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using two free fonts for this logo for this tutorial today. The first is called Garment and the second is called Wicked Grit. Of course I'll include links to both of these in the description of the video. If you're not sure how to download and install fonts for Inkscape I do have a help article on how to do that so I'll link it to this video. But here is the final logo and this is the white version of the logo. I also did a black version when I was creating this so if I just back up a little bit there's the black logo. And I came over here in GIMP and I just overlaid this logo on top of a photo. So here's what this looks like on top of a photo. Going back to Inkscape here, I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. You can see we have text that's sort of sloping upwards. We have these two arrows on either side. This logo is supposed to represent like a compass. And then we have text going in a circular motion around and so we have get out there on the top and get back here on the bottom. And both follow the same circular shape. This is a pretty easy logo to create, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by opening up a brand new composition by going to File New. And I'll hold Control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. Of course, I have my Inkscape canvas set up to be like Adobe Illustrator's artboard. If you want to see how to do that, you can check out my help article on the subject on my website. And I have quite a few menus open over here, so let me just close these out. And I'll leave the Align menu open and I'm going to close out the text menu. If you want to open up your Align and Distribute dialog, just click on this icon right here. That'll open that up. All right, the first thing we need to do is we need to add our main text. I use the free garment font for the main text in my logo. You guys can use whatever font you want. Of course, I will be linking the garment font in the description of the video. But I'll come over here and grab my text tool. And I'll start by clicking on my canvas here and I'm just going to type my main text which in my case will be Wander Tech. I'll put it all on a single text line. I'll hit Control A to select all the text. Then I'll come over here and I'm going to change my font. So I'm going to change this to of course that Garment font. So here it is, Garment District. I'll click on that. And I know I want my text to be bigger so I could change the size of my text over here. I'm going to go with the largest size to start. I think that's still a little bit too small, so let me just go all the way up to 200 and hit the Enter key, so that looks better. And now what I can do is grab my selection tool and come over here to Align, and I'm going to change this to Page, and then I'm just going to align this to the center, both vertically and horizontally, so now this is nice and centered, and I'll click off the text. Next, I want to basically rotate this text and then shear it, but I want to do it according to a particular angle. That way we're not just sort of guessing on this what the angles are for other elements of our design. So to do that, I'm going to use a guide and angle that guide. Luckily, this is pretty easy in Inkscape. I'm just going to click and drag a guide from the top and release. And then I'm going to double click on this guide, make sure you're hovered over it. And I'm going to change the angle here to seven and a half and click OK. So now we have a seven and a half degree guide, a seven and a half angle guide. Now what I'll do is I'll click on the text here and then I'll click one more time and that's going to bring up my rotation handles. So we have a different set of transform handles here. And you can also see down here the rotation angle as I rotate it. So I'll hit control Z and I'm just going to rotate this until that says seven and a half down there or something close to it. I don't need it to be really exact in this case. All right, so that's 7.51, that's close enough. And now I'm just going to come over here and just realign this, make sure everything is nice and center aligned. And we can, of course, just drag our rotated guide here up a little bit. We're going to use that later, so we'll just leave it there for now. Next, I'm going to add my subtitles to this, and I want to make them in a circular shape, so I'm going to have to create text that's wrapped around a circle here. So for starters, I'm just going to come over and grab my ellipse tool here, or my circle tool. And I'm going to come over here and choose a color that's going to be easy to see. So I'll go with this maroon color here. And you can always see your fill and stroke up top here. And now I'm just going to draw from near the center of my image. Hold the control key to make sure this is a circle. And then hold the shift key to make sure it draws out from the center. And we're going to come up with a nice size here for this. It doesn't have to be exact right now. And I'll just release. I'll grab my selection tool and I'm just going to align this once again to the center. 
Now I'm gonna come back over here and grab my text tool and I'm just gonna click on my canvas here and with the caps lock key on, I'll type get out there, control A to select everything. Now I need to change the font to our second font which is gonna be Wicked Grit. So here it is. And the text is a little bit small right now so let me just increase the size of it to, let's go with 50 and I'll hit the enter key. And maybe I'll actually try 60 here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'll grab my selection tool and I'm going to click on my text and my circle. So make sure both of these are selected and go to text, put on path. And that's gonna put my text on the circle. So I'll click off of this. And now I'm gonna click on my circle and click on it again and bring up these rotation handles. And I'm just gonna rotate the circle. So I'm not rotating the actual text. I'm gonna position this so that it is nice and centered on my main logo text here, which you could see pointing out of the sides here or sticking out of the sides. You can also come over here and just lower this below if you can't see your main text. So you can click to lower the layer to the bottom layer or the bottom of the object stacking order, I should say. This looks good. So the next step is I need to put the bottom portion of the text on here. And to do that, I'll hit Control D to duplicate just the circle. So don't duplicate your text. And then I'll grab my text tool and I'm gonna click below here on my canvas and with the caps lock key on again, I'll type get back here. Control A once again, I do need to change this back to that same font we were using. So Wicked Grit, make sure this is set to 60, hit the enter key. Now I'll grab my selection tool and I do need to scale this circle up a little bit and you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna hold the Control and Shift keys and I'm gonna scale it so that the outer portion on the top here of the circle just covers the text going on right there. So you'll see what I mean. So I'm just gonna go right about there. Now I'm going to shift click so that we have both the circle and the text selected and go to text, put on path. And now what I need to do is I need to bring the text inside the circle and down here. And to do that, I'll just come over here and click on the flip selected objects vertically option. So that'll bring my text inside here. And something else I wanna do is I wanna make the text a little bit easier to see relative to the main text and the top portion of the text here. So I'm actually gonna change the color of the circle. And to do that, I'll just click off of here, click back on my circle, and I'm going to shift click on the color black, and then I'm going to just regular click on this X here. That's gonna get rid of the main fill color. Now what I'll do is I'll click on the stroke of the circle here again to bring up the rotation handles. And I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. And we also need to fix the text. It's kind of squished together a little bit too much. So I'll grab my text tool. I'm gonna to click inside this here. Uh, you can hit Control A to select all the text. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm just going to increase the spacing between all the letters. I want it to match the top text here. So we're keeping that in mind. I think that looks pretty close. We can probably go a little bit more here. All right, let's go with that for now. I'll grab my selection tool. Click on the circle again, click once more, and just rotate this so that it matches up a little bit better. About right there. The last thing I need to do here is I need to adjust the position of my text so that these circles are gonna match up essentially. So right now you can see they're a little bit off. So what I need to do is just click on this circle here and I'm just going to click and drag this down. And I'm gonna drag it down until you can see the circle here is lining up with the top portion of the text and it's also lining up where this smaller circle inside and the larger circle outside are perfectly framing the bottom text. So that looks a lot better. All right, once my top and bottom circular text are all sorted out, now what I need to do, of course, is delete these circles so that we can just have the text portion of our logo visible. And to do that, I'm going to click on the top portion of the text and go to path, object to path, and I'll click on the bottom portion of the text and repeat that. So path, object to path. Now that has separated that from the circles, it's separated the text from the circles. So as you can see, I can move the circle out of the way, hit the backspace key and it won't affect the text. And I'll do the same for that other circle there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the size of my main text here by holding control shift and then dragging the scale handle out. And I'm just gonna scale it up a tiny bit. I don't wanna overdo it here. Maybe about right there and just make sure that we're nice and centered. All right, the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna add those arrows on either side of the WanderTech main portion of the text. And so to do that, I'm just going to move my guide a little bit so that it's basically centered up with my main text or at least centered up where I want it. 
And then I'll come over and grab the path tool or the Bezier curves tool. Hold control and zoom in. And so all I did for this was I just sort of loosely clicked to draw a triangular shape here. So maybe we'll go with about right here. And then for the last connection here, I just clicked and dragged. And that allowed me to create a curved bottom portion there. And you can see my handle is just aligning with the guide there. So that right handle. Then I'll grab my selection tool and I'm just going to click on the black color and shift click so that there's no stroke. I'll hold control and zoom out a bit. And I just want to scale this down a little bit. So maybe about right there and then I can align it up with the guide there. And then I'll hit control D and that's going to duplicate that. And I'm going to bring this over here to the left portion of the logo. And then I'll come up here and I'm just going to flip this horizontally and then flip it vertically. And just align this with the guide there. If yours is not snapping to the guide like mine is, uh, your object that is, uh, you can come over here and just turn on the snap guides option. And I'm just going to click on this and move it out a little bit to make sure these are nice and centered. And that looks pretty good. I'll hold control and zoom out. Now I can come over and click on this guide and hit the backspace key to get rid of it. And of course, if I wanted to change the color of this, I can just hit control A to select everything and just come over and click on any color inside of here. And we could change this logo to whatever color we want. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. And don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified every time I have a new tutorial. You can also check out the links to my resources in the description of the video. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.